Hello and welcome once again to Solo Board Gaming Presents. Ta da! Waterloo Solitaire. It's another one of those book games from uh, Worthington Publishing and brilliantly designed by the team of Mike Wiley and Grant Wiley and Sean Cook. Exactly like the previous volume that I was greatly and pleasantly surprised by, Bismarck Solitaire, that we did a review of just a few weeks ago. And I've had great fun with that game. I thought, oh, I wonder if they'll bring out another book game, because it's such a brilliant idea. And I never thought that the one that they would come up with would be Waterloo. Wow! Now, I've got to tell you, so far, and it continues to amaze me, sitting in my living room on the couch with the TV on, you know, something in the background that others are watching, I'm happily refighting Waterloo. And I fought three battles of Waterloo quite happily with the book game on my lap, my trusty dice tray on the settee next to me, and all I have to supply is a D6 and a pencil. And there we are, we're refighting Waterloo. Let's take a look. So in no particular order, because I haven't planned this at all, um, you've got your table of contents, first of all. You've got the rules, which is just a couple of pages and an example of play. But then the way this book is divided, brilliant. You've got 24 games, basically, over 56 pages in the book. You got you can play the Battle of Waterloo 24 times. 12 of them you will play as the French side. So you're attacking, attacking, attacking. And 12 of them you'll play as the Allied side, defending, 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 hopefully until the Prussians can arrive. So you've got the two sides of the battle in one book. Then, for instance, if you take the uh, 12, let's say, the French side, those are divided into three. There are four games at standard mode, easy, introduction, whatever you want to call it. Uh, another four games at difficult level and another four games at very, very difficult level. And the same when you decide that you want to play the English side. So you got easy or standard, you got difficult and you got very hard. A great concept. So let's go into, oh, and by the way, uh, because I know people do ask this question, again, just like the other um, volume, Bismarck Solitaire, it's brilliantly bound. There is no problem in flattening this book out to play it uh, if you're going to play on your table rather than on your lap. So uh, let's have a look. We have a couple of pages of very clear rules. Um, couldn't be simpler. The action charts, the game board explains what's what. Uh, game components that are on the board itself. So that's just two pages of rules. Three, four pages of rules. I think that's about right because it ends with combined arms rules. So four pages of rules. Then how to win. Then they mention that great success, the Bismarck Solitaire, which I'm still playing and love it. And then we get on to an example of play. Uh, and I think that's for two turns. Yeah, two turns. And then, okay, let's have a look. How's the game set out? And look, you can flatten it perfectly well. No problem at all. First of all, let's take a look at the map. Shall I zoom in a little bit? There you go. I hope that's all in. And there before you is the field of Waterloo. And on this first one, you're playing as the French. And as you can see, I've played this game. I've marked the uh, map. And I use a soft pencil. What's this one? Is this one a B? Oh, a 5B. So I use a soft pencil. Very easy to rub out. Some people use acetate. I know that. Uh, other people photocopy the map. I know that. 
Um, absolutely fine, but there's enough games in here, honestly, that occasionally you'll take this off the shelf and you'll play yourself a Battle of Waterloo. And it's going to take, I would say, uh, 30 minutes. I would say most battles are going to be 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how long your game lasts. But look, let's have a look at the map. Uh, Waterloo Solitaire, and you've got all of the usual uh, places. This is from the French side. So you've got the Charlois Brussels Road here. You've got the Ridge of Mont Saint Jean here. You've got Hougoumont. You've got La Sainte, uh, where we got we've got the Prussians coming in over here. Plante Noir, La Belle Alliance. Lovely looking map, and it's the field of Waterloo that most of us recognize really, really readily. Then you've got the units marked on the board, and they're simply listed. You've got first corps here for the French, second corps, third cavalry, fourth cavalry. You've got the reserve and the imperial guard. Okay, so that's for the French. Then over here for the AI bot, for the British allies, you've got uh, the allied right wing, left wing, reserve, and the cavalry. And of course, you've got contingent in Hougoumont and Les Santes. Brilliant map. Before we go into uh, how it's set out, I'm just going to show you, this. let's go straight to the other side of the field. Look at this, this is another game I played when I played the Allies. So now we've swapped the battlefield around. We're looking at it now from the Allied side. Just press it down a little bit. So of course now we've got Plan Senoir and the Prussians coming in from our left. We've got Hougoumont over on our right and Les Sant, and we've got the French before us here and again you got first corps second corps the reserve and the guard and here we've got our left wing our right wing our cavalry and our reserve let's just go back to the beginning is it this one yeah okay so how does the game work well the first thing we do is we choose a command we're playing as the french here so we choose a command and here are our actions along the bottom here. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And they're all different actions, but you can't use the same action on a consecutive turn. Let's have a look. Second core. And here they are. They'll mainly be attacking Hougoumont, for instance. So you can choose this as an action for your first turn, but with a plus two, which is detrimental for the French, modifier. OK, or they can bypass Ugamont. And this is where you're working out your strategy. So you can attack the allied right wing. But if Ugamont is still allied. You get a plus one die roll modifier for attacking the right wing. Or you can attack the allied reserve. If the right wing has already been destroyed. First core, they can attack Le Sant again with a detrimental modifier, or they can attack the left wing, or they can attack the allied reserve if the left wing is destroyed. The Imperial Guard, they here they are. They can attack the left wing, the right wing, or the Prussians, or attack the allied reserve if the left or the right wing has been destroyed. Cavalry charge, the right wing, they can attack the third cavalry, or they can attack the Allied Cavalry or the 4th Cavalry. Uh, where are we? 4th Cavalry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> can attack the left wing or the Allied Cavalry. And then the Reserve. Do they attack the Prussians? Or, and look at this. Do you move units from the Reserve, as, as I've done here, into these reinforcement boxes to reinforce your wing here or maybe here? And I wish I'd reinforced this wing, the second core, 
because my second core got destroyed and I lost this game as the French. Wow! So that's actual strategy, actual battlefield movement. You can move your reserves into either of your wings, but once you've used the four reserves, you've no more reserves. And all the while, of course, the AI, the bot, is going to be moving the Prussians through the woods to attack your flank. So you've got to attack, attack, attack before too many Prussians build up and start attacking you. Now, okay, so I said only one action can be chosen and that action can't be chosen the following turn. No. So let's say second core, and here they are. Let's say you decide to attack Ugamon with a plus two detrimental die roll modifier. So you do the attack. Now, we put the turn we use them in the box to remind us that we can't use them next turn. So don't just tick the box. And, and you can see here I've used them on turn two, four, six, eight. I was really going at that. <laughs> uh, slight warning here. <laughs> Bit of advice. I lost the game. Here we go. As the French on turn eight. Because I destroyed entirely the second core. Uh, make of that as you will. Now then. <laughs> but that didn't matter because at the same level of difficulty, I have four more chances to fight that particular battle. And I did. Look, I refought the battle. So it's the same battle again from the French side because I really got the bit between the teeth. And this time I won. And I just about won. And this time right up to game turn 13 it took me. And look at all the Prussians that were arriving. Look at the beating I took here. My first core was all but destroyed. But luckily I got some reserves in here. I also had to reserve the second core. Or move reserves into the second core, sorry. Um, but luckily I got the results I needed uh, during turn 13. Brilliant. Absolutely stunning. Okay. And then finally, we can choose, but we're limited. We can choose combined arms tactics. And there it is there. Combined arms tactics, which give us uh, a modifier in our favor. And in that sense, we can, for instance, I don't know, we can use the uh, first core on turn seven, let's say, um, to attack the allied left wing. Uh, and so you'll put the turn number down there and you'll use your cavalry, maybe uh, the fourth cavalry to support. So you put an S in their activation box there and use combined arms. And it only allows you to use it up to five times. If you're playing the allied side, they've only got three chances of using it. Or you've got Napoleon here. Once all of these are filled up, like for instance, the activations there are, 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 are filled up. Instead, on my next turn, as the French, I could activate Napoleon. And he will allow a, another activation of one of the actions that have been completely used up. That's Napoleon's special power, if you like, his influence. Now, the bots. How does the bot work? So, in this first game, the bot is the uh, allied side and you simply roll a die so you choose your action you don't take the action you then roll a die for the bot and that'll give us one to six wellington right wing left wing allied cavalry charge allied artillery fire prussians arrive and that kind of thing but there's a couple of chances that if you can't if the bot can't do a certain thing instead you'll use the the tactical events chart the tactical events chart down the side. So if you, for instance, roll a number one or a number four and you can't do a cavalry charge for the bot, instead you'll roll on the tactical events. And, and we've got Blucher leads the way, confusing orders, stout defense, infantry square, reverse slope tactics, allied artillery tactics, and so on. And it's similar when you're playing the allied side, let's go to the allied side. Look at this. Every single picture 
on each of the pages on the 24 battles is different. So you've got some real theme here. And this one I'm entitled, Our Army is Composed of the Scum of the Earth. They're scum, sir. And so on. So on the, let's just flatten it out. When you're playing the Allied side, uh, as I said, you don't even get three chances of combined arms tactics. And look at all these. Look at how many times I was trying to get playing the Allies. Look, I played this one so many times. Prussians arrived, trying to get more and more Prussians to arrive over here because I was being battered by the French because the French bot is going to attack, attack, attack. And I used the Prussians arrive on turns one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, forty, more or less every single time I could. But even though you use that, you still have to roll and they might not arrive. And that happened a few times. And you've got the same thing for the bot. You've got six uh, options when you roll for the bot action and also the uh, another six actions for the tactical events there's a lot happening and there's a lot of strategy uh, in this game much more than you would actually think and um, my goodness me it's so enjoyable and just to complete the picture once you've chosen your action you choose your action you you don't actually carry it out you then roll for the bot action and the bot does carry out their action ah you see so it might be something that you completely did not plan for. You then carry out your action as the player. And we resolve any conflicts. There's a attack results table just here, as you can see. And when something is destroyed, then you put a cross through it. You move your reserves around. And finally, at the end of the book... Here we go. At the end of the book, you've got some designer notes and strategy, which is excellent. You've got the French battle results for the battles that you're fighting with the French and the Allied battle results for the battles you're fighting as the Allies. And as you can see here, uh, my first French battle, 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 <laughs> I lost it on turn eight. That was a loss. Had to play it again. And I won, but took me right up to turn 13. Look at this as the allies. And this is uneasy. So I'm going to have to learn <laughs> from my mistakes as I go through these battles. This was uneasy. Uh, and I did win as the allies, but it took me right to uh, turn 16 to do so. And for each one, there's what? How many? Uh, 18 turns for each one. So there you go. I hope that's given you a little bit of a better understanding of what you'll find if you buy this brilliant book game from Worthington Publishing yet again. I, I just love it. And, and, and I just hope now that they'll keep this series going. I can imagine, for instance, a squad level skirmish war game or something like that in this series. Um, so there it is. Waterloo Solitaire from Worthington Publishing, well worth a look. And just like Bismarck Solitaire, available very, very reasonably right now from Amazon. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers now. See you soon. Bye-bye.